Hello everyone and welcome back to Colony Survival. In today's episode we're going to focus on a couple things. First one is expanding our base. Safe zone. Right now our safe zone is right to here and our moat is over here. So I'm going to go buy another safe zone expansion and then push our moat out to meet it. So we basically have a lot more buildable area. It'll add five blocks past this one, five blocks past that one over there. So that's the first thing we're going to do. That In order to do that, I believe it's going to cost us 1,500. Let's see, banner safe zone. 35 blocks to 40 blocks. 1,500 points. So let's go buy that real quick. I should have plenty of linen to sell to make those points up. So there's linen. Let's sell this till we hit the 1,500 mark. There you go, so that's 1500, so now we can buy the expansion. Done. Now if we go check, our safe zone should be a little bit further out. So yeah, that's all the way out to here now. Almost to the edge of the island. One more expansion, well, maybe two, and we'll have this side of the island covered. But so I'm going to set our diggers to work leveling this, and then have our builders fill in this trench, and diggers expand out the trench to meet the new safe zone. So that's what I'm going to do first, and after we're done with that, we'll head over to the mountain and start an outpost. So I'm going to get our builders to work on that, and then we'll head over. So that's done. Uh, our builders and diggers flattened out the area, expanded it by 10, right up to the edge of the safe zone. Gives us some extra room to build out here if we want to, which we'll need in the near future. As well as we could probably add another field over here, because it bumped it out by 10, so it would be just enough room for another field if we want to like terrace this down the hillside or something. So anyways, it's prepped ready for future expansion. But now let's bring up the Astrolab, which shows us where the biomes are. And as you can see, there's some mammoth trees over here, along with a marsh back there. Mammoth trees are really far away. Marsh and a heath, so it's kind of fun to see what's around. There's mountains, obviously, which is where we're going to head next, 397 meters. Marsh and heath, so I think the first thing we're going to do is attack the mountain biome so we can get a source of tin and gold going. Uh, so, in order to do that, we just gotta. I'm gonna put the astrolab away in case I die. I don't want to lose it since it was expensive to make. Once we establish a new colony, we have, will have access to our inventory, but not until then. The first thing we have to do is buy a banner. So, let's run over here. Sell a whole bunch of linen. Okay, and now we can have him buy a banner. Whopping 1500 points. So that's an in inventory now. Now all we have to do is make sure we take it with us before we leave the colony so we still have access to it. Because once we get outside the colony, we won't have access to our inventory. So there's that. So I'm going to head over to the mountain here. And there's no sense you watching me run 400 meters to the mountain. So let's leave the colony, take a quick look back. Looking pretty good. And let's head over to the mountain. So we made it back to the over to the mountain. You can see our colony way over there in the distance. So hopefully we don't get lost. But I'm basically just gonna run up the side of the mountain here and blast a hole in the 
by blast I mean sit here and dig, but no, gold and tin can only be found underneath the snow caps. So if you're on a mountain and there's no snow, there's no gold and tin. Sorry, I'm not very good at climbing. This is probably tall enough. So what I'm going to do is just dig a hole back into here and set up a colony. So I will dig out a hole, start up building a base, and come back and show you what I got. So I've dug a little hole into the mountainside. Nothing crazy. And uh, I'm going to put the banner down. Start a new outpost. Select this colony that it's tied to. We'll call it Mountain. If I could spell. Alright, so we'll call it Mountain. Hit Create Outpost. And now we have access to our inventory again. Which means I can... Now it shows a different threat level up here, so it throws so a threat level of zero. Now our total threat will be divided between this colony and the other colony based on the ratio of colonists we have. So, but the reason I put the banner down right now is so that I could actually put down three beds. And this way we can recruit some colonists for this colony and assign two to guards and one to digging and building for me so that way I don't have to sit here and do it manually. So, recruit to fill all beds. So that's three colonists. We'll gotta start protection right away, so let's put down uh, some guards. Two up front should be fine for now. Our, our threat level is six now. So two. That's a bad. So we'll just put two protecting the engines for now. Hopefully that'll hold it for now. Worst case is we lose one colonist. And I'm going to set him to do a building job. Or I should say a digging job. There we go, now he'll dig it out. It's a nice little square out for me. Give me some room to work. And then we'll go from there. And hopefully our two guards will protect us at night. So that's a nice little area dug out for us. I also added a little platform out here for our guards to stand on. And built a little, basically, trench. Forcing the zombies to go down on the mountain a little bit and around. Give our guards more time to shoot them. So, see how that works out. Then uh, I started digging down, but before we go down, we want to unlock the special digger. We go into science. Special digger, it doesn't really say what it does, but it basically allows you to select one kind of rock or stone to dig out, one kind of material to dig out, and it ignores everything else. So you'll see why that comes handy in a minute. So let's. Get a thousand points here. Go unlock that. Cost us a thousand colony points. But now if we head downstairs we can... So I found clay and copper here. Kept going down. And found this small square stuff which is actually I believe tin and this is iron and if I went down even further there's gold down here so let's set up a special digger area so 
So you just do construction, special digger area, and now you select what rock or material you want it to dig out. So we want dark stone block to, to, for it to dig. So now it'll only dig out dark stone block. It won't, if it finds any ore in here, it won't dig it up. It'll just ignore it. So here you go, and I'll do the same thing up top here. So we'll dig a special construction, special digger area, dark stone block. And we'll have them dig that out. So I'll let them get to work on that. And then we'll set up some miners and we'll have to put down some more guards because we're going to have a lot more colonists here doing some mining. You can see our colony way off there. So before we take a look at what they dug out, in anticipation of putting some miners down, let's add some extra guards for extra protection because our threat is now 13. And it's going to go probably double that. So I don't know, we'll see if 8 guards holds them. Let's go take a look at it. So this is the tin floor. I had to dig out this way to find some. As you can see, they dug a nice level over here. They left all the ore. That was because I only selected for them only to dig out the dark stone block. So that's why there's all this floating ore around here. We'll clean that up later. But so let's put down. Um, of miners. We'll start with two on tin for now just to get us going and then we'll come back and beef up production. They need somewhere to sleep. And a place to eat and a place to get tools. So they're set for tin mining. And let's go further down and see what the gold level found. Quite a bit of gold down here, so that's good. So let's do the same thing down here. Let's put in two gold miners. That'll get us started. They need somewhere to sleep as well. tools and meals. So they're good to go. So all we got to do is recruit to fill all these jobs now. Our thread is now 22.6. But we should have gold mining as well as tin mining going. So now we can head probably back to our main colony and see what's next. I think uh, we want to get I believe it's bronze tools. Yeah, bronze tools. We want to make sure those are being made to speed up production of everything. So I think that's what we'll focus on next, but we'll have to make sure our smelters can handle the new uh, incoming ore with tin coming in, as well as uh, gold coming in. So I'm wondering, oh, it must be nighttime. I was going to say, I don't see any miners down here. Let's go check the threat level and see how they're handling it. So far so good, but it's early in the night. So I'll stand here and watch it for a night or two to make sure that they're good to go. And we'll head back to the main colony and uh, start our next project. And we're back at the main colony here. First thing I'm going to do is check my inventory, see if the smelters are keeping up with the ore or not. So let's check that real quick. You can see I have 37 gold ore, 20 copper ore, 27 tin. So that means my smelters are not keeping up, so I'm going to have to go put some more smelters down. Let's do that real quick. Excuse me. 
So I'm going to keep them in groups of five, so I'm going to add one more here. So let's put one here. I guess well, I dug up another area over here, so let's put one here as well. Let's see if that, that's enough to keep up or not. Let's see, these guys are waiting for... What are they waiting for? Bronze ingots, which are made at the smelter. And bronze ingots are two copper ingots and tin. So the we we have the materials, we just don't have enough smelters going. So we'll let them work on that, see if they keep up with that. Uh, the next thing I want to play around with is... Actually, let's look at science real quick, see what we can accomplish there. I think it might be time to move to bread meals. So let's unlock bread. We have the stuff, tablets of ancient wisdom and colony points. Have both of those. So let's complete that. That'll unlock potted flour and grindstones. So we'll wait for our job block crafter to make these. And then we'll start the bread chain, which shouldn't be too bad. And while we're waiting for them to make that stuff, I wanted to play around with the fail safe. I've never used it before. But I believe let's, let's stick one down. This is the Sacred altar, that's not what I want. I want a sacred fail safe. Okay, so. So the sacred fail safe is, let's put it down. It doesn't, it does cause 10 threat. But basically you build up sacred points by feeding your, your colonists sacred meals. And then you can come over here and trigger this, and it'll, uh, right now, the failsafe will reduce the total health power of incoming monsters by 0%. That's because we don't have any sacred points right now. So we got to focus on making sacred meals. So I'm going to make sacred bread meals, since that's what we're working on next. And I believe the first step in sacred meals is beekeeping, so we can make candles, because that's how you, I believe, the altar... Sacred bread meal requires a candle and a bread meal. So we're working on doing the research for the bread meal now. So candles, I believe, are made from the beekeepers. So let's put some beekeepers down. I think these are like the berry farms where you can go as small as you want possible. I don't know. We're going to try and see. So they, they make candles here, I guess which will be used in the sacred altar over here to make sacred meals. So we'll let them build stuff for the the uh, bread meal chain. So the sacred failsafe. Every time the colonists eat a sacred meal, we get a point. Right now we have 158 points. The more points we have, the more damage the fire, the failsafe will do. So right now we'll cause 5,214 damage if we trigger the health, trigger the fail safe. Right now we're spawning monsters with a total of 50,000 health power each night. So this won't do a whole lot of damage, it'll only do what, 10% of the damage to the monsters right now. But the more points we have, the more damage it does, and I believe we later unlock the ability to store more points. So, good concept in case we need it. Hopefully we won't need it, but you never know. Now they built the grindstones for the kitchen up here. So let's put those down. These take three wheat and a pot and turn it into a pot of flour. A pot of flour is then used by the cook over here to make bread. And in turn the bread is used to make a bread meal. So right now our wheat's being used over here in the fire pits for wheat porridge. So we're gonna hopefully Stop making that and start making bread meals, which are slightly more efficient. But in anticipation of doing that, we're going to put down on our wheat farm just to make sure we have enough. We've been going through what everything we have right now you can see in our inventory. We only have 13 wheat and only 11 wheat porridge meals, so we're not even maxing out the wheat porridge meals. They're eating them faster than we're making them. 
So I, I prepared an area over here. Goes right up to the safe zone border, but it should fit for now. So let's put in another wheat farm. Ten by ten area. For now, up I'm going to put the beds over here. We'll have to build them a nicer home in, in the future. So let's hire for those jobs real quick. And then next up on the science list, I think we're going to go after these bronze lock boxes. Right now we have copper lock boxes which store 50 points a piece. These bronze lock boxes store 500 a piece and only cause 10 threat. So basically right now for 500 colony points in copper storage, that would cause 30 threat. So we can reduce that down 20 points to 10 threat with these bronze lock boxes. So we'll definitely want to work towards that. But the uh, stuck in the trench here. Okay. Uh, if we check our inventory again, the copper and tin copper's going down, but gold and tin are still going up slightly. So I think we need more smelters downstairs. So let's run downstairs and put down two smelters and I'll show you. I created a se separate group for the smelters. You can do have up to five groups on the smelters. Let's put those down. So they default to the group one here, which is basically high priority on copper. So if they have copper ore available, they'll make that first which is good because we need that for the arrows and stuff, but you can take and switch to group two, which I've set as high priority of bronzing. It's second priority of gold and last copper. So I'm gonna set a couple of these furnaces, smelters to group two. So I'm gonna take these three. This one was already on group two. And so these three will pri prioritize making bronze ingots instead of copper. And then if they run out of supplies to make bronze, they'll go move down to the next item on the list, which would be gold. And if they run out of gold, then they'll make copper. So we'll see that, try that, see how that works out. I guess I have to hire for those jobs too. So hopefully I'll get the bronze ingots done, and that way we can have the uh, new lockboxes up and running to reduce our threat level so our guards don't have to work as hard. Back down at the smelters here, I had to add a total of 15 smelters. So we have 15 smelters going right now. These last five I've changed to prioritize gold and bronze evenly. So that way they'll work on those if they have either of those and then if not they'll go to copper. So that seems to be working. Our inventory levels are gold ore is going down. We have no tin left and no copper and our bronze ingots, copper ingots and gold ingots are going up. So headed in the right direction. So that's good for there. Now it's on the science front. Uh, bronze lockboxes, we have everything we need to complete that. So let's do that so they can get making them. They are made at the engineer's bench. So our engineer will be busy making those. And I also want to unlock these projectile traps. Uh, that way we can stop these high health power monsters. It'll fire arrows at them. All right, let's sell some more linen to get the colony points needed. So, uh, projectile traps, they only fire at monsters that have a thousand health power and they deal 2500 damage every 10 seconds, so pretty powerful stuff. That way we can take care of those bigger monsters and they can stop making it past my guards. So let's complete that as well. Those are made at the 
engineer's bench as well, so we'll probably put down another engineer because he's got a lot of stuff to make now. So let's run over there and do that. Where is he? He's in the writer's desk area, I believe. Writers are busy, and here's our engineer making all this stuff. So let's put down another engineer just in case we make this stuff a little faster. Scribe's desk. Forget what it looks like. This one here. So that'll be good. Let's hire for him real quick. And I'll be busy making those. I think I'll put the traps. Stuck in the trench again. I'll put the traps over here. I think I'll put them for starters right in here. Now they can fire down the pathway at the high health power monsters. I believe they'll only trigger on the high health power so they won't be wasted on the lower health power ones. They'll only shoot the heavy duty ones. So that'll be nice and that way we can put a trap fixer right behind them. The trap fixer will come out and stock the projectile traps during the day. And then he'll sleep at night. So yeah, so let's wait for that stuff to be built. Okay, on the science front, let's take a look at unlocking the crossbowmen. Basically have everything we need, so let's go ahead and do that. That'll give us crossbowmen at night, which basically does double the damage of the regular archers. However, the ammo is more expensive to make. It requires four ingots to make instead of... Let's go see what the other one may cost to make. Into the armory here. So our regular arrows cost two ingots to make. The crossbow bolt bolts take four of them to make, so double double damage but double the expense. So what's next? We got the copper lock boxes to replace. So let's run down here and see. We have current level is 243. Actually, we gotta go spend some points first before we do this, this so we don't lose our points. Wow. Let's see, our threat is 243. Let's remove some of them and put the bronze ones in its place and see what it what it does. So three of these is the equivalent to all these ones that I have down. But we're going to delete these if I can get the right button. So now our threat level is... 189, and we have 1600 colony points available to us. So, much more efficient use of space and much less threat. So, bonus both ways. So, that's good there. And we unlock some of these projectile traps. So, let's put some of those down. I'm, I'm going to start them off. I only have two of them right now, so I'm going to start them here. I want them to fire this way. Red means they're not stocked with inventory. So we need a trap fixer up here to do that. So I'll just put him back here for now. Hire Fred. Oh, he's already hired. Okay, good. So he will come during the day and stock these traps. And then the, the, the sh traps will shoot off at night and then he'll reload them the next day. So see it's green, so he just loaded that one. So they should do a help us out with our, our damage and take out the higher health power zombies. 
He's, looks like he's going to get them both stocked before the night's up, before the night starts, so. I see I took out the guard, so let's put him back in. So yeah, we'll come back at night and see how these are doing. So hopefully we'll get those crossbow bolts built and then we can put some of those guards down and that'll help us. Because right now there's monsters still making around the corner here. So we want to try to see if we can stop that. Alright, let's look and see what science we can take care of. Let's get some stuff out of the way. So bricks, we can complete those. Let's complete that. This jewelry thing, we can complete that. That'll give us some stuff that hopefully we can sell for lots of colony points. And this compass is something we're going to want to get to because for next episode, I think we'll, uh, one, try to expand our safe zone one more time, which is going to require 5,000 colony points. So I'll probably focus on that at the beginning of the episode just so I can get these guard towers into the safe zone finally. Right now, if you look at it, we're just almost close enough to get them. So another one more expansion and they'll all be in the safe zone that way. Zombies won't be able to spawn on them and I'll be able to put guards on them and use them as intended. So we'll focus on that next episode as well as we'll probably start another colony in the uh, underneath the mammoth tree so we can get zinc going. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time.